we are going to talk about Jamstack in this video. Jamstack is a philosophy or uh, an architectural style to deliver web content to the end users. Uh, there are several traditional approaches available to build a web application and deliver content to the end users, uh, but there are some challenges around those traditional approaches. So in this video, we are basically going to talk about what are the challenges around the traditional approaches and how Jamstack can solve those problems. Let's get started. Let's start with designing a simple web application using the traditional web development approach. Consider we need to build an e-commerce website and let's see how to do that using the traditional approach. So the first thing we need is a content management system. So we need a content management platform uh, which could be anything, which could be a Drupal or uh, any other content management system. <clears throat> so basically the content editors will be using the content management system. So they will feed the data into the CMS. So in our e-commerce application, the content editors basically have to feed all the product catalog information into the system. So we may have many number of products and a lot of categories for those products, right? So they need to feed all those data into the system. The list of products, the pricing for those products and the stock availability. So all those information will be fed into the CMO system by the content editors. Now this data will be stored into a database. It could be it, it stored into a data store. And that could be a MySQL or a SQL server based database. So now this is the whole content management system in place, right? And this whole system is actually internal to the company. Like these content editors are actually the employees of the company. And this whole system is not exposed outside of the company. It's internal to the uh, company. Now, but we need to actually build the e-commerce website, which needs to be exposed to the public internet because that system needs to be accessed by the end users, right? They have to get into the website, browse the products, and they should be able to submit the order for the product and pay for it, right? So the actual system needs to be exposed to the internet, and that's the next thing that we need to build. So basically, we need to have a web server, a web application. So this web server actually fits the data from the database. It fits the data from the database and then it constructs the HTML pages dynamically on the fly and then it serves those pages to the end users. So this is the traditional approach of the, uh, any web application, right? So the end users will uh, hit some URL in your application and that request will go to the web server and the web server will talk to the data store, it will fetch the data and then construct the HTML pages on the fly and then it will serve it to the end users. I already mentioned that there are some challenges with the traditional uh, web development approach, right? So let's talk about those challenges. One of the primary problem is that in this approach, we have to manage the web servers and we have to make sure that these web servers are reliable. Because if the web servers goes down, your website goes down and that impacts the business. So the reliability of the web server is very important for the reliability of your website. So you basically have to have a handful of infrastructure engineers in your team to make sure that your web server is reliable and resilient. So the first problem is that you have this infrastructure maintenance overhead. And the second challenge is security. Since you are the one who was responsible for managing all your servers, now you have to make sure that all your servers are secured properly. So you need to ensure that the security patches are installed properly in all the servers and you also have to make sure that the firewall is configured properly and also you need to ensure that the components, necessary components are installed to prevent the DOS or DDoS attacks. And because since this is a public facing website, there could be a lot of chances that anyone could try to attack your website. And the third challenge is performance. Performance is important for any public facing application because page load time is crucial for the websites. So it is very important to keep the page load time lesser. So how do we do that? How do we improve the performance in this traditional web development approach? One thing is that you can increase the processing power of the web servers, or you can basically go ahead and increase the number of servers in the backend. And especially if your company desired to put on a big billion sale, or if there is a festival season, of course, there's going to be a lot of users going to visit your website, and you need to make sure you have enough processing power to handle all those requests. So these are all the challenges around the uh, traditional web application development. Now let's see how Jamstack solved those problems. 
If you notice one thing in this approach, the content that we are serving to the end users is always same. It's not going to change. No matter the users, whether the users are coming from different parts of the world, or no matter whether the users are coming from a different age group, the content that we are serving from the website is always going to be same. If that is the case, then why do we have to construct the HTML pages on the fly for every single request, which is unnecessary, right? So the principle from the Jamstack is that it suggests to construct all the HTML pages ahead of time and then just host it in a static file server and serve it to the end users. There is no need to construct the HTML pages dynamically on the fly for every single request. And that's what the M in Jamstack stands for, pre-built markup. Now, another thing is that right now, not all the websites are always static, right? Maybe because it is not 1990 anymore. Uh, because if you look at the websites in 1990s, it looks very static. I mean, most of the websites feels like a Word document. You just read and consume the content. That's all. You cannot interact with the websites. But right now, there are a lot of advanced JavaScript frameworks available, available and which enable the users to interact with the websites in an easier way. And the suggestion from the Jamstack is you can leverage all those advanced JavaScript frameworks in your web application. And keep in mind, in the traditional web application approach, we cannot leverage all the client-side JavaScript frameworks. Maybe you can try to use the server-side rendering for React or Angular, but still it puts some limitation on the backend tech stack. So the J in the Jamstack actually stands for client-side JavaScript. The principle suggests that go ahead and leverage all the advanced JavaScript frameworks. And also, apart from these two, sometimes the application also needs some server-side processing. Say, for example, in our e-commerce website, we still need to process the payment, right? So, uh, so the so suggestion from the Jamstack is that go ahead and reuse the APIs that are already available in the market. There are several third-party services available, uh, like you can go for Stripe for the payment processing. Or if you want to have a dynamic search in your application, then you can go for Angolia. So there are several third-party services available which you could leverage in your web application. And also still, if you need a custom server-side processing, the recommendation from the Jamstack is go for serverless functions, go for cloud functions, and expose those logic as an API and consume those API from the client-side JavaScript. So the A in the Jamstack actually stands for reusable APIs. Now let's try to build the same application using the Jamstack, and let's see how that goes. So this top portion remains same even with the Jamstack uh, because the content management platform still needs to be there. But the difference is whenever a new content gets updated in the data store or whenever an existing content gets updated, the data store should fire an event and that should trigger the static site generator. So this static site generator will fetch the data from the data store and then it construct all the HTML, JavaScript and CSS. So it basically construct all the static assets needed for your web application. So it spits out all the static assets like HTML, JavaScript and CSS. So this whole process can be done using some kind of a pipelines using Jenkins or GitLab actions. So in any time when there is a change in the data store, it triggers the static site generator and build all the HTML, JS, and the CSS assets. And these static assets can be hosted in a static file server in a cloud provider, maybe AWS S3. So it could be hosted in the AWS S3 bucket. And then these static assets will be rendered in the browser and the end users will be actually using the browser to access the website. So this is the overall flow using the Jamstack. So now your application might be doing some kind of a server-side processing like payment, right? So for that reasons, you are going to reuse the APIs available already in the market. So uh, the client-side JavaScript running in the browser will make an API call to the cloud services. And that's how the entire process actually works. So if you look at this whole approach, right, there is a very clear segregation uh, between the content management and the content delivery. So any, uh, so in case if there is any impact in these systems, like if the static site generator, the server who is responsible for the static site generation goes down, it will not impact your website. Even if this server goes down, your website will still be available. Uh, so that's one of the advantage of Jamstack based approach, right? 
and there are no servers here so there is no infrastructure maintenance over here and also you don't have to worry about the security because there are no servers that we are managing here there are no public facing servers and also think about the performance right so right now all the static assets has been served from the aws s3 and there is no processing power because we are not generating any html pages on the fly for every single request so there is no need for the performance sorry the processing power so so jamstack is a powerful approach to build the web application and it's going to be the default uh, uh, approach for the web development in the future so in this video we talked about how the traditional web development web development approach looks like and what are the problems we have to face with the web development with the traditional approach and how jamstack solve those problems so i hope this video is really useful to you thanks a lot for watching audio jump